In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You can give a better amen to God than that. Father, we thank you and bless your name. We know you are a great God, a mighty God, a majestic God. And we know that whenever we come to your presence, we are to honor you. And we are to hear your word like the people who respect the Almighty. We're asking, Lord, tonight, your word will bear fruit in every life in Jesus' name. Amen. Write this word upon the tables of our heart. Give us the strength and the power, the courage and the fortitude to be obedient to your word in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. We're coming to John chapter 8. And in John chapter 8, I'm reading two verses there. Verse 32 and verse 36. John chapter 8. I'm reading from verse 32. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Verse 36. If the Son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. Most people live below their privileges in Christ. I just read to you now, the privilege we have in Christ, that when we come to Christ, and Christ does his saving work in our souls, he makes us free. He sets us free, and he keeps us free, free from sin, free from sickness, and free from Satan. And many people who name the name of Christ live below their purchased freedom. They do not have total freedom. They lose full freedom that Christ has provided for everyone. There are church goers, nominal members of the body of Christ who are defeated by temptation. They're defeated by sin. They live below their provision in Christ. They labor and yet they themselves are not the partakers of the fruits of their labor. They live much below their birthright and their privileges and the purchase of Christ on Calvary. They live below the privileges we have in Christ. As you look at the words of Christ, as he says, you shall know the truth. And if you know the truth, the truth will set you free and achieve the Son who abides in you. The Son who lives in you. The Son who walks in you. The Son who regenerates you. The Son who empowers you. The Son who does a mighty redemptive work in your heart. If that Son shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. He's talking about the purchased rights we have the redemptive rights that we have, the family rights that we have in Christ. If we're members of the family of Christ, and he is a redeemer, he is a savior, the spirit is a comforter, and we call God a father. By these that Christ has done, we become free, and free indeed. Many people suffer unnecessarily. And many people will suffer in eternity because they pursue transient freedom and they ignore true freedom which Christ has given us. Come to those verses again, verse 32, John chapter 8. And ye shall know the truth. It's not talking about knowing the truth in the head. It's knowing it in the heart and believing it that it was done for you. That what Christ paid, the price he paid, he paid that price for you in particular. 
And when you know this truth, as you know two and two make four, if you know this truth deep in your heart, you shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free. It's not struggling that will make you free, trying that will make you free. It's not um, just confessing it that will make you free. It is the truth you hear, the truth you accept, the truth you internalize, the, the truth you personify, the truth you take hold on, and you say, this is mine. You shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free. Verse 36, if the Son, is not a stranger to you. If the sun is not far away from you, if the sun is in contact with you, in touch with you, if the sun has converted you, if the sun has transformed you, if the sun is living inside you, and that sun shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. You'll be free. I said you'll be free. Romans chapter 8, I'm reading from verse 2. In Romans chapter 8, verse 2, For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free. That's Paul the Apostle. You couldn't be a preacher if that Spirit has not come into you to make you free. You couldn't be an apostle. You couldn't be an evangelist in the New Testament sense. You could not be a pastor, a teacher, a minister if the Spirit has not come to make you free. Free from sin and free from all the oppressions of the enemy. The law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. It'll keep you free. After making us free, he also keeps us free. Galatians chapter 5. I read from verse 1. Galatians 5, verse 1. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ has made you, made us free. It says Christ has done something. Calvary has done something. The substitutionary atonement of Christ has done something. He has given us liberty and has given us freedom and is now telling us, don't waver, don't faint, don't be weak, don't surrender yourself to a power that has already been totally defeated, stand and stand fast in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free and be not entangled again of the yoke of bondage. You will not get back to bondage. I will not get back to bondage. What Christ has overcome on my behalf, I will continue to overcome. I said, I will continue to overcome. And you will not yield to any yoke of bondage in your life anymore in Jesus' name. First Corinthians chapter 15. I'm reading from verse 57. First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 57. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. It says, if we're in Christ, because of what Christ has done, and through the liberty the Lord has given us, he always gives us the victory. Second Corinthians, I'm reading from chapter 2. And I'm reading from verse 14. Now, Thanks be unto God, which always, always, somebody shout the word always, say it, say it, always causes us to triumph in Christ, always. 
it causes us and makes us to triumph in Christ and make it manifest the saving or the savor of his knowledge by us in every place. All those references clear it for us that Christ has made us free and by his grace and through those promises will live a life that is totally free in Jesus' name. The topic tonight is the bold victory of the justified believer in Christ. The bold victory is not just a quiet backside victory. It's not just a victory that nobody cannot even see. Nobody can even see. But it's a victory that is clear and visible and permanent. Even the heavens can recognize this is the victory, bold victory. The bold victory of the justified believer in Christ. Three things we're looking at. Number one, the constant victory of true believers over sin. The constant victory of true believers over sin. We're coming back to John chapter 8, reading from verse 32. John chapter 8, reading from verse 32. And he shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Earlier, he had spoken to a woman that was taken in sin. And he had said that woman free. And from the freedom of that woman, he had also informed us that all the people believing in Christ will remain free. John chapter 8 verse 11. She said, No man, Lord. And Jesus says unto her, Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. Freedom from sin. Victory over sin. Verse 12. Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world, and he that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. That's still telling us we're free. I am free. Matthew chapter 1, verse 21. In Matthew chapter 1, verse 21, it reminds us, And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. He shall save by his sacrifice, by his teaching, by his work of oppression in our hearts, he shall save his people from their sins. Actually, the Old Testament people had been looking forward to the time when that would be real in every life. Some of them experienced it like Enoch. Some of them had that freedom like Samuel. Some of them had the freedom like David, like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. But then they were looking forward to the time when the Lord will do it for everyone. And he tells us in Psalm 4, verses 3 and 4. Psalm 4, verses 3 and 4. But know that the Lord has set apart him that is godly for himself. He doesn't make use of those who are not godly as prophets, as preachers, as shepherds, as laborers, but he reserves, he sets apart those who are godly for himself. The Lord will hear when I call on him, standing all, verse 4, 
and sin not. Old Testament, stand in reverence of the Lord and stand in the cleansing fear of the Lord and sin not. Commune with your own heart upon your bed and be still. Psalm 119. Reading from verse 1. Old, the Old Testament people look forward to the time when they'll be free, totally free from sin. And the grace of God available for people like Enoch, like Samuel, like Daniel, was available for the rest of them too. If they will hold on unto the Lord. Psalm 119 verse 1. Blessed are the undefiled in the way who walk in the law of the Lord. Blessed are they that keep his testimonies and that seek him with their whole heart. Verse 3, they also do no iniquity. Can you believe that? Old Testament. They also do no iniquity. They walk in his ways. Verse 11. Thy word have I hid in mine heart that I might not sin against thee. And now when you come to the New Testament, when the one that sets us free, the son that sets us free, the sacrifice that sets us free, the atonement that sets us free, when he came, he made it possible and easy that every day we live in victory over sin. We're coming to Romans chapter 6. Romans chapter 6, we're reading from verse 1. Romans chapter 6, verse 1. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin? Shall we continue in transgression? Shall we continue in defilement? Shall we continue in adultery? Shall we continue in fornication? Shall we continue in violence? Shall we continue in any evil that the grace, that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Look at verse 6. In verse 6, knowing this, that our old man is crucified, was seeing that the body of sin, the nucleus of sin, the totality of sin, the generator and the origin of sin, might be destroyed and that henceforth we should not serve sin for he that is dead is freed from sin if we're if we're crucified with christ if we're dead with christ if we're buried with christ if we're risen with christ there should be no sin in our lives no secret sinning no habitual sinning, no daily sinning, no occasional sinning, no careless sinning. We live in victory, constant victory of the true believer over sin. Look at verse 11. Likewise reckon ye yourselves also to be dead indeed unto sin but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let not sin. Therefore reign in your, in your mortal body. You can overcome if you want to. And he gives you the commandment here for the power of Christ, for the presence of Christ, and with the sacrifice of Christ, that works for you and works in you, you now have the ability to put sin under your feet. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that you should obey it in the lusts 
fear of. You are an overcomer. Look at verse 18. Being then made free from sin. Look at that. It's talking to all the believers. It's not talking to some selected believers, senior believers, high believers, everyone, all the believers, all those who have tasted of the grace of God, the young and the old, the man and the woman, the member and the minister, being then made free from sin, you became the servants of righteousness. Verse 22. But now, being made free from sin and become servants to God, ye have your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life. It's mine. You've got it in Jesus' name. First Peter chapter 2. Verse 24, in First Peter chapter 2, reading from verse 24, who his own self bear our sins, all our sins, who his own self bear our sins, even those sins anybody might have struggled with and you found it difficult, he bore them. He set us free. Who his own self be our sins in his own body on the tree that we being dead to sins dead to sins dead to sins what does that mean sin does not attract you anymore sin does not draw you anymore sin does not force you anymore Sin does not create an impossible situation in your life anymore. It's so strong, I can't overcome. It's so great, I can't overcome. I try, I struggle, but I still fall. Not at all. Because now you are dead to sins and now should live unto righteousness. You will live a righteous life. First John chapter 3 and I'm reading from verse 4 First John chapter 3 reading from verse 4 whosoever committed sin transgresses also the law for sin is a transgression of the law and ye know that he was manifested to take away take away Take away our sins, and in him is no sin. When he comes into any life, and he comes to any heart, he looks for sin in every corner of the heart, in every compartment of the heart, in every area of the heart, and he takes away sin, removes sin, Completely, so that if temptation is coming, it will come from outside. And because he lives on the outside, he gives us the victory, victory over sin. And ye know that he was manifested to take away our sins, and in him is no sin. Verse 6 Whosoever abideth, in him sinneth not. Want us to go out of Christ to sin. Want us to go away from the influence of Christ to sin. If Christ abides in you and you abide in Christ, whosoever abideth in him sinneth not. Whosoever sinneth either deliberately intentionally, defiantly, whosoever sinneth, openly, secretly, whosoever sinneth, with I don't care attitude, they don't care for heaven or hell, it says whosoever sinneth, 
yielding himself to the devil, has not seen him, neither known him. Little children, let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. He that committeth sin, tell me. He that committeth sin, tell me. So the devil, he loves the devil. He honors the devil. He obeys the devil. He reverences the devil. He says, yes, devil, I must obey you. I must lean towards you. I must do what you tell me to do. Those who commit sin, they are the devil, the children of the devil, the servants of the devil. And if they influence other people too to commit sin and don't care for their freedom in Christ, the servants of the devil. He that committed sin is of the devil. For the devil sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Somebody shout, Amen. Amen. Whosoever is born of God does not commit sin in the secret. Whosoever is born of God does not commit sin, whether woman, married or not married. Whosoever is born of God does not commit sin, the sin of stealing, either stealing in the office or stealing in the church or stealing from a neighbor, whosoever. As some people say, I'm not a worker. That's why I'm committing sin. Uh-uh. You're not a Christian. That's why you're committing sin. I'm a new convert. I am not, I'm not going to seminary. I'm not going to college. That's why I'm committing sin. Uh-uh. Whosoever, every child of God, and a real child of God, lives a life that is free from sin, sinning. Whosoever is born of God does not commit sin. It's so and so that pushed me to it. It's so and so that led me into it. No, it's because you didn't abide in Christ. Whosoever is born of God does not commit sin, for his seed remaineth in him, and he cannot sin. You will not sin. And he cannot sin. I said you will not sin. Because he's born of God. He's a member of the family of God. You see that when Christ comes in, he gives us the victory. Victory over sin. Look at chapter 5, verse 18. Chapter 5, verse 18. We know that whosoever we know those who are well taught. We know those who are reading their Bibles. We know those who are learning from the Word of God. We know those who have experienced it. And Christ is living big inside them. We know that whosoever is born of God, tell me, sinneth not. But he that is born of God, he that is begotten of God, keepeth himself and that wicked one tell me touches him not he will not touch you if somebody cannot touch you he will not hold you if somebody cannot hold you he will not drag you if somebody cannot drag you, he cannot force you and say, today, today, you must commit sin. You will say, no, I will not commit sin. No, I will not commit sin. Say it now. That wicked one will not touch you. That wicked one will not hold you. That wicked one will not drag you to sinning. 
that wicked one will not force you in Jesus' name. Christ's sacrifice was not to give us license to continue in sin. No, he says, go and sin no more. Christ's suffering was not to grant us freedom for sinning. Never. He came to condemn sin. He came to call us to repentance. He came to turn us away from sin. He came to forgive, to set us free, and to cleanse us from sin. He came to implant in us hatred for sin. He came to implant in the believer hatred for sin. He came to write indelibly in the heart of the believer that you must hate sin. He came to free us from all sins and he came to give us constant victory. You'll be free. Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. We're reading from verse 3. Romans chapter 8. We're reading here from verse 3. In verse 3, for what the law could not do in the Old Testament, in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending forth his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin as condemned sin in the flesh. It doesn't excuse sin. It doesn't promote sin. It doesn't encourage sin. It condemns sin. In Luke chapter 5, Verse 32, Luke chapter 5, verse 32, I came not to call the righteous, but to call sinners to repentance. He has come to call us out of our sins, and he calls us to turn in away. Acts chapter 3, reading from verse 26. Acts chapter 3, verse 26, unto you, first, God, having raised up his son, sent him to bless you in turning away, in turning away, turning away every one of you from his iniquities. Chapter 5 of Acts, verse 31. Acts chapter 5, verse 31. Him as God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. First John chapter 1, verse 9. First John chapter 1. We're reading from verse 9. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us. He forgives, he doesn't leave it there, and he cleanses us from all unrighteousness. And I said, he gives us hatred for sin. Psalm 119. Psalm 119. Verse 104. Verse 104. Through thy precepts I get understanding. Therefore I hate every evil, false way. I hate every false way. That's what Christ does in the heart 
when you save souls, verse 128. In verse 128, therefore, I esteem all thy precepts concerning all things to be right, and I hate every false way. I hate every sin sinful, every sin that is evil. It grants us constant victory. Constant victory will be ours, all of us, in Jesus' name. Amen. We're coming to point number two now. The confirmed victory of trusting believers over sickness. Number one, we have victory, constant victory, continual victory, continuous victory over sin. Not only that, we have confirmed victory. If we're trusting believers over sickness, let's come back to John chapter 8. In John chapter 8, I'm reading from verse 32. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Another amen. amen. And if the Son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. We'll be free over from every sickness in Jesus' name. But you know how we become free? He says, ye shall know the truth. The truth. In both covenants, the old covenant and the new covenant, the Old Testament and the New Testament, the Lord has given us total freedom from sickness. Look at the word of God. You will know the truth. I will know the truth. And the truth you know will make you free from sickness in Jesus' name. Exodus chapter 15, verse 26. And said, If thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, they were saved, they were redeemed, they were children of God, the Lord thy God, and wilt do that which is right. In my, in my sight, they had the grace of God. Without grace, they couldn't do what was right in the sight of the Lord. And will give ear to his commandments. They loved the Lord. And then it says and keep all his statutes. I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which... I have brought upon the Egyptians. Amen. He says, if we're saved, he says, if we're free from sin, he says, if we keep free from sin and we keep obedient to him, he will not bring any of the Egyptian sicknesses upon us, for I am not I was. I am, not I will be, I am, it's not past or future, I am today and every day, for I am the Lord that healeth thee. I am healed. Look at Exodus chapter 23. I'm reading from verse 25. Exodus 23, verse 25. And ye shall serve the Lord your God. Anybody serving the Lord here today? Here is a promise for you. And this promise will never fail. It's an abiding promise. It's a continual promise. It's a promise that remains, abides all the time. If you're serving the Lord 
and ye shall serve the Lord your God, and ye shall bless thy bread and thy water, and I will take sickness away from the midst of thee. If you take this to the, to the Lord in prayer every time, anytime you feel the presence of any ailment, any sickness, any infirmity, any plague, any devastating sin that comes against your life, and you open the Bible and you read it back to God, God, this is what you said you will do. I will take sickness away from the midst of thee, and I shall nothing cast their young, nor be barren in thy land. Read the latter part of verse 26, 1, 2, 3, go. Sickness will not cut short your life. The number of thy days I will fulfill. We're coming to Psalm 103, Psalm 103. And we're reading from verse 1, Psalm 103. We're reading from verse 1. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Some people have forgotten part of the benefits. They have not forgotten salvation. They say, praise the Lord, I'm saved. They have not forgotten sanctification. Praise the Lord. He made me holy. He cleansed me. I'm going to heaven. And praise the Lord. He gives me victory over temptation every time. Great benefit. But they have forgotten the benefit of his healing power. And it says in verse 2, Bless the Lord of my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgives all thine iniquities, that's only one benefit. Who heals? How many diseases? How many of your own diseases? Who heals all thy diseases? Who redeemeth thy life from destruction? Accident will not destroy your life. Who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies? Who satisfies? thy mouth prosperity for you provision for you sufficiency for you who satisfies thy mouth with good things so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles thy youth is renewed like the eagles as your days, so shall your strength be. As your days, so shall your health be. As your days, so shall your authority be. As your days, so shall your freedom be. As your days, so shall your deliverance be. As your days, so shall dominion be. As your days, so shall your power be. As your days, so shall your courage be. He renews our youth like that of the eagle. And the strength of the Lord will never fail in your life in Jesus' name. Growing older, you'll grow stronger. Growing older, you'll grow healthier. And growing older, you'll grow stronger in Jesus' name. Psalm 105, I'm reading from verse 37. 105, verse 37. He brought them forth also with silver and gold, and there was not one feeble person among their tribes. They were about three million and they had been serving under rigor 
terrible labor in Egypt and he brought them out. He gave them salvation and he gave them healing. Not one feeble among all the three million people. If he could do that at that time, he will do more at this time. Not one brother, sister, feeble among us in Jesus' name. Psalm 107, I read from verse 20. Psalm 107, verse 20. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destruction. Sent his word, the word coming to you, sent to you will heal you of all sicknesses. Isaiah chapter 53. Isaiah 53 verses 4 and 5. Isaiah 53 verses 4 and 5. Surely he has borne our griefs, our pains, our infirmity, our oppression, and carried our sorrows and carried away our suffering. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgression, so we can be saved. He was bruised for our iniquities, so we can be saved. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes, and with his stripes, we are healed. Open that page anytime you have infirmity, sickness, plague, attack, affliction. Read it back to God. By his stripes, I am healed. Christ bore my sin, my suffering my shame, my sickness. If he bore everything, I cannot be bearing it again. You cannot lay my sickness on him and lay it upon me at the same time. There'll be no point him bearing it and I'm still bearing it. I am healed. You'll be healed every time in Jesus' name. Matthew chapter 8, some preachers, some writers, some authors in their books, some theologians, they say, you know, that thing you've read in Isaiah chapter 53, verse 5, by his tribes were healed. It's not talking of physical healing. Uh, is talking of spiritual healing. Theologian, I don't accept that. Look at the interpretation in Matthew. Matthew chapter 8. I'm reading from verse 16. Matthew chapter 8, verse 16. When the evening was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils. And he cast out the spirits with his word and healed how many people? And healed how many people? If you were there on that day and you were sick, what would he have, what would he have done? Would have healed you. Has he changed? Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever, and heal them all. Look at this, look at this, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Zaius the prophet, saying himself, took our infirmities and bear our sicknesses. In the fulfillment of Isaiah, our physical healing, Look at the summary of the ministry of Christ when he was here on earth. Acts chapter 10. I read from verse 38 how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth 
was the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good and healing and healing and healing how many people all that were pressed of the devil for God was with him some preachers they say yes we know God has power to heal but you know he can decide whether to do it for one person or the other they say it's like a father if a child is asking something from the father the father will look at that thing that the child is asking and if the father sees that it is not good for the child the father will say no and in the father saying no he has answered it's not that he did not answer the child was asking for something the father knew that the thing is not good for the child and so he answers by saying no it's not that's not right if the father has promised that thing to the child if the father has purchased that thing to the child if the father has done it for all the other children in the family and the child is coming to ask what the father has promised what the father has purchased the father cannot say no look at all these people at the time of jesus everyone that came received their healing and jesus did not say no it's not okay for you the father wants you to bear your sickness because this is the best gift of the father for you and so i say no the father promised in the old testament and through jesus christ he has come to fulfill and when we come to ask the father now through jesus christ he heals all that are oppressed of the devil pastor how about some people that were not have not been healed that's a great question that's why the disciples came to jesus and they said why could we not heal him that boy maybe the father would have said it's not the will of god the father did not say that maybe the father would say this sin is coming upon this child to teach him a lesson no he didn't say that if you want to teach your child a lesson do you bring sickness upon your child church tell me no you can correct your child you can instruct your child you can lead your child in any other way but not to put sickness on the child why couldn't we cast him out because of your unbelief for i say verily unto you if ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed ye shall say unto this mountain and you will not doubt it in your heart be thou removed and be cast in the sea it shall be so and nothing shall be impossible unto you do you believe that nothing will be impossible unto you look at that verse 38 again how god anointed jesus of nazareth with the holy ghost and with power who went about doing good healing all that were oppressed of the devil for god was with him when we pray today god will answer when you pray anytime god will answer mark chapter 16 we're reading from verse 17 mark 16 verse 17 and these signs shall follow them that believe looks like you are going to have some signs following you from today and these signs shall follow them that believe in my name 
they shall cast out devils they shall speak with new tongues they shall take off serpents if they drink any deadly sin it shall not hurt them they shall lay their hands on the sick and they shall recover verse 20 and they went forth and preached everywhere the Lord walking with them and confirming the word were signs following. Signs following. Confirmation was signs following. Acts chapter 19. I'm reading from verse 11. Acts chapter 19. We're reading from verse 11. In verse 11, And God wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul. And God wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul. Now, you put your name instead of Paul. Because Paul is gone. Paul is not going to pray for your neighbors today or pray for the house fellowship members today, or pray for the members of the local church today, and God will work special miracles by the hand of... He will do it in Jesus' name. Verse 12, So that from his body were brought unto the sick handkerchiefs or aprons, and the diseases departed from them, and the evil spirit went out of them. When Paul could not reach them, and they could not reach Paul, they took anchors from him, aprons from him, and they laid on the sick, and those people recovered. Great miracle. How did that happen? Why did that happen? Look at verse 13. Then certain of the vagabond Jews, exorcists, took upon them to call over them which had evil spirits the name of Jesus, saying, We adjure you. By Jesus, whom Paul preaches. And there were seven sons of Sceva, a Jew, and certain of the priests which did so. And the evil spirit answered and said, What did the evil spirit say? Tell, no, you, you, are, you, are not, you have not started. One, two, three, go. Praise the Lord. Jesus, I know. What does that mean? Those evil spirits said, we know Jesus. We know his authority. We know his power. And we know his wonders. And we know even his name. If Jesus came and said directly, go out, Jesus will recognize, will go out. But the evil spirits did not stop there. The evil spirit said, and Paul, I know. Even if an apron comes from Paul, I recognize I will run away. Even if an anchorship comes from Paul to cast me out, I won't allow them to labor, labor before I go out. I will go out. Paul, I know. And if Paul himself comes directly and he says, come out, I know his voice. I know his authority. I will come out. What's that teaching us? The evil spirits recognize the believers. The salvation of Paul is the same as your salvation. And the word, the name of Jesus in your mouth is the same as the name of Jesus in the mouth of Paul. And so, if you confront those evil powers, like the new Jesus, the new Paul, they'll recognize you, they will run away. Jesus, I know, 
and Paul I know. As you look at the healing covenant of God in the old covenant, that healing covenant came to take sickness away and to keep sickness away. It says it will take sickness away from us sometimes because of sin, the sin of neglect, the sin of unbelief, the sin of disobedience, the sin of ignorance. God's covenant with the Old Testament people became irrelevant, impotent, and will not work. But every time they repented and they called upon the Lord, He forgave them, He cleansed them, He canceled the penalty. And they became healed. And the healing virtue flowed through the prayer unto them. And today, as we pray, God will answer prayer. Actually, many people don't understand. The Old Testament people were limited in their praying for healing. But in the New Testament, we're not limited. Number one were healed by the word of God. Speak the word only and my servant shall be healed. Some people carry bottles of oil about because the only way they know that healing can come is anointing with oil. New Testament is wider, greater, and deeper than that. Number one, the word of God. Number two, the name of Christ and his name through faith in his name, has made this man whole, whom you see and know. Acts chapter 3, verse 16. Number 3, by the stripes of Jesus. By the stripes of Jesus. By whose stripes ye were healed. First Peter chapter 2, verse 24. Number 4, by the fatherhood of God. If he been evil, know how to give good things to your children. How much more shall your Father, who is in heaven, give good things to them that ask him? Number five, by the mercy of Christ. Luke chapter 17, verse 12. The ten lepers came and they said, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on us. Go show yourselves to the priest. And while they were going in the way, they were cleansed. Number six, by the power of Christ. For God is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that you ask or think by the power that worketh in you. Number seven, by the indwelling presence of the Spirit. If the Spirit that raised up Jesus Christ from the dead dwell in your mortal body, he that raised Jesus from the dead will quicken your mortal body by the Spirit that dwelleth in you. Always by the Word, by His name, by stripes, by the fatherhood of God, by the mercy of Christ, by the power of Christ, by the indwelling presence of the Holy Ghost, you are healed through and through. Every week, you are made whole. And no sickness will remain in your body as you believe in Jesus' name. Point number three now. The complete victory of transformed believers over Satan. Complete victory of transformed believers over Satan. We're coming to John chapter 8, and I'm reading from verse 36. John chapter 8. Reading from verse 36. If the Son, therefore, shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. 
And then he goes, I know that she here, Abraham's seed, but you seek to kill me because my word has no place in you. I speak that which I have seen with my father, and ye do that which ye have seen with your father. They answered and said unto him, Abraham is our father. Jesus says unto them, If ye were Abraham's children, ye would do the works of Abraham. But now ye seek to kill me, a man that had told you the truth, which I have heard of God. This did not Abraham. Ye do the deeds of your father. The search, then said they unto him, We be not born of fornication. We have one father, even God. Jesus said unto them, If God were your father, ye would love me. For I proceeded forth and came from God. Neither came I of myself, but he sent me. Why do ye not understand my speech? Even because ye cannot hear my word. Look at this. Ye of your father, tell me, the devil. And the laws of your father, ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning. He abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. Connect that with verse 36. If the Son therefore shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. When you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you are made free from sin. As you look at the promises of God and you know the truth, you are made free from sickness. And as you remember what Christ has done on the cross of Calvary, you are made free from Satan, from satanic power. You have the victory today. Look at Luke chapter 10, verse 17. Luke chapter 10, we're reading from verse 17. In verse 17, and the 17 returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils, even the devils, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. And behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Nothing shall by any means hurt me. Nothing shall by any means hurt me. You are victorious over Satan in Jesus' name. Over evil spirits in Jesus' name. Over demons in Jesus' name. Romans chapter 16, verse 20. Romans chapter 16, verse 20. And the God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet shortly. And the God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet shortly personal and the God of peace shall bruise Satan under my feet shortly it is confirmed in Jesus name 
Ephesians chapter 6, verse 16. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 16. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. I will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. In your family, you will quench those thirst. In the local church, you will quench and destroy all those darts in Jesus' name. Hebrews chapter 2. Hebrews chapter 2. I'm reading from verse 14. Hebrews chapter 2. Reading from verse 14, for as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy, destroy, destroy him that had the power of death, that is the devil and delivered them who through the fear of death were all their lifetime subject unto bondage. You are delivered in Jesus' name. First John chapter 4. I'm reading from verse 4. First John chapter 4. We're reading from verse 4. It says in verse 4, Ye of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. You believe that? Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Chapter 3, chapter 3, we're looking at verse 8. The second sentence in verse 8, for this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. In your body, in your life, in your family, all the works of the devil are destroyed in Jesus' name. First John chapter 5, verse 18. First John chapter 5, verse 18, we know that whosoever is born of God sinneth not, but he that is begotten of God keepeth himself, and that wicked one toucheth him not. That wicked one toucheth him not. He will not touch you. When he touches people, what happens? He gives them sickness. He gives them incurable disease. He gives them, you know, whatever. But well, thank God he will not touch you. James chapter 4, we're looking at verse 7. James chapter 4, verse 7. In James chapter 4, verse 7, Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil, what will happen? And he will flee from you. He will run away from you. He will not stay around you. He will not continue to oppress you. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. First Peter chapter 5. I'm reading from verse 8. The sober. Be vigilant because your adversary, the devil, as a running lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. That's not the end of the sentence. Whom resisted fast in the faith, resist him steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. You've got the victory already in Jesus' name. We have complete victory. Over sin, I have victory. 
Over sickness, I have victory. Over Satan, I have victory. How does this victory come? How do you enjoy this victory? Number one, by the atonement of Christ. By the atonement of Christ. Jesus died on the cross so that the atonement will set you free. Number one, the atonement of Christ. Number two, the ascension of Christ. He went up and ascended on, ascended on high and he led captivity captive. Number three, by the appointment of God. He died and after that death, the Lord Father God in heaven and exalted him that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow. The atonement of Christ the ascension of Christ, the appointment of God by the anointing from Christ, by the anointing from Christ, and it's by the anointing every yoke is broken, and by the authority to cast out all devils, the authority to cast out all devils, the signs shall follow you. And then number six is the agreement of Christians. If two of us shall agree as touching anything that we ask on earth, it shall be done by a Father who is in heaven. And whatsoever we bind on earth is bound in heaven. Whatever we lose on earth is loosed in heaven. And then even by the acknowledgement of the conquered spirits, they acknowledged it. Jesus I know, and Paul I know, and by their own acknowledgement, they are defeated from your lives in Jesus' name. John chapter 19, I'm reading from verse 30. John Chapter 19, we're reading from Versace. When Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, he said, it is finished. Can you say that with me? It is finished. Can you say that again? Say that for the final time. The power of Satan is finished from your life. The power of sin is finished from your life. And the presence of sickness finished from your life. It is finished. You are free. What are you? You are free. What are you? I said you are free. Stand up and claim your freedom. Claim your freedom. We have total victory. We have bold victory. We have constant victory. We have confirmed victory. We have complete victory over sin, over sickness, over Satan. It is finished. Call upon the name of the Lord and you'll find that that sin will no more have power over your life in Jesus' name. Tell the Lord, tell the Lord, it's finished. The power of sin is broken. It is finished. The power of evil is broken. It is finished. Sin shall not have dominion over you. It is finished. He sets the captive free. He forgives. He cleanses. He purges. He makes us free. Know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. Believe the truth. And the truth shall make you free. Accept the truth. And the truth shall make you free. Embrace the truth. And the truth shall make you free. You shouldn't be in bondage to any sin. To any sickness. To any satanic power. To any evil spirit. Claim your freedom. 
the liberty wherewith Christ has made you free. Abide in that freedom. Enjoy that freedom. Affirm that freedom. Stand on that freedom. No sin, no sickness, no satanic affliction. He set me free. Free from sin. He set me free. Habitual sin. Occasional sin. Secret sin. Open sin. He set me free. That evil one cannot touch you, cannot hold you, cannot force you into sin. He set me free. Cannot intimidate you, frighten you into sinning. He set me free. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. The sin that overcame you in the past, not today. Now it is finished. Now you realize. Now you believe. Now you accept. Now you trust. Now you rely on the Lord completely. That Christ has set you free. Calvary paid the price. He paid it all. You won't see in, in the night. You won't see in, in the day. You won't see in, under the cover of darkness. And you will not see in, in daylight. Free. You fear no tempter. You fear no temptress. You fear no man. You fear no woman. That will drag you into sin. You stand. You have backbone. You have courage. You have stamina. You have grace. You stand. You are born again, so you don't sin. You are born of God, so you will not sin. It sets you free. Free from sin. Makes you free. Free from every sin. Ye shall know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. If the Son shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. If the Son shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. Small sins, little sins, big sins, weighty sins, ordinary sins, common sins, you're free. He set me free. He set me free. He set me free. 
abide and stand in that liberty wherewith Christ has made you free. The blood of Jesus cleanses us from all sin. The blood of Jesus cleanses us from all sin and keeps us from all sin. His power sets us free. And remember, he sets us free from sickness. The word of God heals us. He sent his word. And he heals us. And delivers us from all our oppression. The name of Jesus heals us. Whatsoever you ask in my name, that I will do. That the Father may be glorified in me. A faith in Christ heals us. Go thy way. Your faith has made you whole. The mercy of God heals us. Have mercy on me, have mercy on me. And they were healed. The fatherhood of God heals us. If ye be in evil, nor to give good things to your children, how much more will your Father, who is in heaven, give good things to them that ask him? Healing is a good thing. They went about doing good and healing all. Let him touch your life and touch your body. He will heal you of every sickness, every disease, every infirmity. He heals today. He says, I'm God, I change not. And Jesus Christ the same. Yesterday, today, and forever. The authority of the believer heals us. This sign shall follow them that believe. In my name they'll cast out devils. If they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay their hands on the sick and they shall recover. His promises are yes and amen. If the Son therefore shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. Remember what he did on the cross of Calvary. Remember his tribes.
by his stripes you're healed. Accept that, embrace that, believe that. And you have victory over every demon, over every evil spirit, over the curse, over Satan, over the old serpent, over the devil. You have authority. Remember what Jesus said, it is finished. 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 It's done. Stand in the victory. Stand in that liberty. Stand in your authority. You finished the devil on the cross of Calvary. The word of power is now in your mouth. The word of authority is now in your mouth. And you can pray for those in the house fellowship. They'll be set free. They'll be healed. They'll have the victory. You can pray for those in your local church. God will answer your prayer. That's why he puts you there to speak words of power and words of authority. You're not looking for any other person to come and pray for them. In your family, brother, you have authority in that family. Sister, the mother, you have authority in your family. And whatsoever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever you shall lose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Speak to that mountain in the lives of those who come to you. The impossible will become possible. Your life, there's victory. Your family, there's victory. Your local church, there's victory. In our church, there is victory. In Jesus' name we pray. And amen that carries authority. Amen and amen that carries power. And amen that gives me the victory. In your life there'll be an amen. In your family there'll be an amen. In your local church, there'll be an amen. Sin will not have authority over you. 
Sickness will not have a lodging in your body in Jesus' name. And Satan with all his attacks will not have any staying power in your life in Jesus' name. Say, I have authority. Say, I have power. Sin shall not reign over me. Let the heavens hear you. Let society hear you. Let all the tempters and temptresses hear you. Let the devil hear you. Sin shall not have power over me in Jesus' name. Sickness will not have a resting place in your body. Sickness will not have a resting place in my body. Say it. Sickness will not have a resting place in my body. I am a temple of God. I am a temple of God. Satan has nothing in me. The devil will not have anything in you. Will not have any authority on you. You will march on the devil. I said you will march on the devil. You will trudge on your problem. Every mountain will move before you. From tonight, no more impossibility. Where? I said where? In my life, in my family, in our church, there'll be no impossibilities in Jesus' name. Who is carrying victory back home? And then you will take that victory to the house fellowship. Where are you? You will take that victory to your family. Where are you? You will take that uh, victory to your office. Where are you? And then you will walk like a conqueror. You will live like an overcomer. And you will live like somebody who knows who you are and you know your right and nothing will conquer you anymore in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you today. You have renewed our knowledge. We knew this before and you're refreshing our memory that we are more than conquerors and that we have the victory, constant victory. We have the victory, continual victory. We have the victory, confirmed victory. We have the victory, complete victory. Make it so in every life in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray for every brother and every sister. I pray for every worker and every leader. I pray for every minister and every overseer. I pray, Lord, for everyone, there will be victory in every life. Sin will not have dominion over any of us in Jesus' name. Saved and sanctified will remain holy, will remain righteous, unbeatable, unconquerable, and Satan with his sin and temptation will not make us fall in Jesus' name. And Lord, you said, we will serve you. You'll bless our bread. You'll bless our water. And then you said, you will take sickness away from the midst of every one of us. Take cancer away. Take that deadly disease away. Any form of sickness that is lodging any part of our body, take it away in Jesus' name. You said the number of our days you'll fulfill. The number of our days you'll fulfill. Your people will not die young. Your people will remain healthy. Will remain strong. As our days, so will be our health and our strength in Jesus' name. We'll continue strong, continue healthy, continue sound, 
I will continue to do your work and the more of the work of God with you, the more our strength will be, our health will be in Jesus' name. Now, Lord, the devil is going about like a roaring lion. It's not a real lion pretending, roaring like a lion. But we have the lion of the tribe of Judah in us. And the real lion, the mighty lion, the great captain, Jesus Christ, will crush that fake lion every time we meet him in Jesus name you said we should resist the devil we shouldn't just sit down and relax and allow him to be pouring rubbish upon us we reject and refuse and resist everything coming from the devil in Jesus name he will have nothing in us he will not touch any of us he will not hold any of us he will not drag any of us Lord everything that comes from the devil will reject every affliction attack that comes from the devil will reject every suggestion every fear that comes from the devil will reject we close the door we lock the door against the devil and we throw the key to the ocean that door will never be opened again for the devil into our lives in jesus name stand in victory walk in victory talk in victory pray in victory command in victory preach in victory live your life courageously in victory you'll always overcome in jesus name you are free from sin you're free from sickness you're free from satanic attack and the lord who has set you free will keep you free from now on, you'll stand in the knowledge that you are more than a conqueror. We well, thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray.